friends, thank you so much for clicking this video. My name is Heather Chesina and you are welcome. So I am so excited to be recording this particular video. This is an extension of a blog post that I wrote about Joseph and the significance of the coat of many colors. So I have been doing a deep dive on the story of Joseph. So I did write the first blog post about Goshen the Goshen blessing. And I also have a really lovely YouTube video that goes along with that. So this is the second video and blog post in this series. I'm hoping to write two additional blog posts. So Joseph is an iconic Bible character. Everyone loves Joseph, I, I think. Everyone loves Joseph. I love him as well. When I was much younger, we did a musical called Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Code. So it was so lovely. So I am so excited to be here. Get yourself a cup of tea, coffee, or whatever beverage you like. Relax <laughs> and let's begin. In Joseph's story, there are many focal points. The first one is the fact that he is a dreamer <laughs> and he also has this gift of dream interpretation. So the first dream that he had, I believe is the one where sheaves were bowing down to him. And then in addition to that, the sun, moon, and the stars were bowing down to him. But I think everyone can agree <laughs> that Joseph is remembered for his coat of many colors. So I hate to be the bearer of bad news, <laughs> but per my research, the coat was not colorful. Yes. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and actually give you that particular information. It made me so sad when I found this out because after doing the musical and being that Joseph is such an iconic Bible character, I've always thought that I have always thought that it's legit a colorful coat. According to the Israel Biblical Studies, they state that the true meaning of the coat of many colors or ketonet pasim as it's called is basically a long garment coming down to the palms of the hand and the feet and they also state that the material was made out of fine wool or silk so they suggest that this garment was worn by those in a high position or royalty yes so i guess the way they interpreted the bible the way we read it we have this idea that it was this colorful coat with like red pink and all these colors very vibrant however with the israel biblical studies they stress that this particular coat actually represented something far much more that it was a garment of royalty it was a garment that only people in high positions wore and this is very very significant when i move over to the next portion and it will really highlight why his brothers were really offended. I feel as if they looked at Joseph as just a goody two shoes. Here is this dreamer coming and they were, it seemed like they were pretty annoyed <laughs> with Joseph. So I feel as if the coat was just another thing that really made them <laughs> super mad and annoyed. Um, yes. So let's move over to the next section where we're going to talk about the significance. So for this particular section, I want to talk about the symbolism and the significance of the coat of many colors. So I have seven points. I will touch them briefly. So if you want to do a deep dive, please check out my incredible blog post. But before that, I want to share something that God spoke to me about yesterday, right before I went to bed. And it is so powerful. So remember in the previous section, I talked about the coat of many colors symbolized authority. It symbolized royalty. So remember 
when Joseph was gifted this particular coat, he was a shepherd boy. He was far from royalty. He was tending to his family flock, right? He was not the second in command in Egypt. He wasn't interpreting dreams for the Pharaoh. He was a shepherd boy, but yet he was clothed with this particular coat that symbolized something that had not yet manifested physically, right? So in the spiritual realm, he was already the second in command. He was managing the affairs of Egypt, right? But in the physical realm at that particular time, he had not yet stepped into his destiny. So what God was telling me is basically it just goes to show you that when God predestines you and calls you when you are in your mother's womb, he has already equipped you and he has already given you all the things that you need to step into your destiny. It hasn't manifested yet. You have to walk the journey, but he has already equipped you. But it will, it will, it might not manifest physically until much, much later, right? So you may have <laughs> 10 Instagram followers. And if people are smart, they may see that truly you have this coat, this coat of excellence. You may have this coat that says that, hey, I'm an Instagram star. I may have 10 followers, but in the spiritual realm, I have this coat that says that I have a million Instagram followers. You may have 10 YouTube followers, but God has given you this coat of influence, of favor, right? It hasn't manifested yet, but in the spiritual realm, if someone would open their eyes and tap into you before you make it big, they might say, hey, yeah, this, this, this girl has something. In the spiritual realm, you have that coat. So what I'm stressing right now is, number one, if you are the person who has a coat and you know that God has called you into something, guess what? Don't worry. Just walk and talk as if things are already done. Walk and talk as if things are already done, right? Now, the second thing is, if you are a spectator into someone's journey, guys, do not be harsh because you may be surprised to see what God has planned for a particular person. So please do not, <laughs> do not be quick to judge. Do not be quick to put someone down. You do not know the vision that God has deposited in someone's heart. You don't know the maybe angelic encounters that they had or the encounters of uh prophetic encounters that they've had, or even just that still small voice that's telling them that, hey, just stick down this path, right? Okay, so that's just what I wanted to say. <laughs> I know I've explained many words, but I, I know what you understand what I mean. So the first thing that I wanted to say is the quote number one is a symbol of birthright. <laughs> so... <laughs> Joseph's brothers were a bit rough. That's an understatement. They were a bit rough. So Reuben essentially lost his birthright. And when Jacob was gifting him this coat of status and of royalty, it basically showed that he is the one who has been selected and chosen, and he would be the one to get a double portion of the inheritance. Okay, number two, it signified that he was unique and different. He had been set apart, right? And as Christians, we have to understand that we have been set apart, right? We have been set apart from the world. So if we have this coat of many colors, wear it and wear it well, because we are not supposed to blend in the crowd. We might stick like a sore thumb. That's okay. We are unique. We are different and we are representing Christ, right? Another thing is God's favor in Joseph's life. Yes, so Joseph had so much favor. I know that if you read the story, you might be like, oh my goodness, he went through so much, so much stuff. 
that was hard. I mean, he was just a dreamer. He was, uh, a, a, <laughs> he was just a, a nice boy, right? A nice boy um, or a nice teenager. But he had this sequence of unfortunate events but guess what? It propelled him to his destiny. So sometimes if you if you are in a situation where people are just against you, people are working against you, guess what? They think they're working against you, but they're the ones who are propelling you into your destiny. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes your enemies are the if they knew, if they knew that what they're doing is actually sharpening your skills, it's actually pushing you to step step into your destiny. I guess they they wouldn't be as harsh. But in essence, yeah, I feel as if the coat of many colors also symbolized God's favor because in as much as so much stuff was happening, we can see God leading him and God protecting him until he rises the ranks to become second in command. So there is God's favor. So if you have, if you are in a difficult time or spot in your life, I know it can be so difficult. Things can appear so dark. You're like, God, where, where are you? But if you, pay attention if you silence yourself if you're still you will see god's hand over your life there is a favor over your life you know in, in spite of everything that's going on another thing is that the coat symbolizes the coat <laughs> symbolized um foreshadowing right it pointed to the future as I've said before, he was wearing that coat. He was basically assuming his spiritual mandate and the mandate over his life. He was already royalty when he was a shepherd boy. He was already the second in command. So if you're seeing me right now, I'm, I'm already, I am seated. Where I'm seated right now, I am seated in my future. I am seated at the point of completion. So yeah. <laughs> So again, it's a sign of God's protection. That's what I, I, I believe the quote also uh, symbolizes and I explain in detail about that. And in that point of God's protection, I also reference 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. And it says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. <laughs> yes, so that is amazing. Yes, we will experience trials and tribulations in this Christian walk, okay? I know that firsthand, but in essence, it will not break us. It will not be towards a point where we cannot bear it. God will always be there. His hands will always be there. His presence will always be there. And as far as God's protection, I don't know if I've ever shared, maybe I shared this in my, maybe I shared this in my book, but I can go ahead and share this as well. So, um, I was really, really close to my dad, really, really, really close to my dad. I loved him so much. And the week before my father passed away, I just heard this voice saying that you need to rest. And I knew what it meant. I knew, and I told people around me that this, I, I, I think dad will be called home. I just knew. And guess what? There was a heavy angelic presence in my home. There was a heavy angelic presence in my home. And there was the, the night that he passed out, I could just feel I don't know how to explain but I it was just so heavy when I was going to bed I just I can't even explain it now in my home we had <laughs> we had motion sensors and they were going off <laughs> and I just remember the alarm company would call us and say oh yeah there's activity in your home the first level I'm like there's none <laughs> at least not in the physical realm but it just shows you that this even if you're going through difficult times i don't know if you're sensitive enough to feel the presence of god because i believe 
those angels were sent to me because of the news that I would receive. Um, yeah, oh, gosh, why do I cry on every video? <laughs> okay, so uh, let's move on. Number six, it shows God's love for Joseph. And number seven, it is a picture of Jesus Christ. And you have to read my blog post because I have how many parallels? Um, I list 14 ways in which Joseph is a type of Christ. So go ahead and read my blog post. Yes, I'm going to plug it here again. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead and read it. And then I'll go ahead and wrap up because this video has to be under 20 minutes this time. So let's move over to the next chapter. Here I am to give you the takeaways. So I want to ask you, what Bible character are you? What story or Bible character do you resonate with? Is it David? Is it Gideon? Joseph? Deborah? Esther? Which Bible character do you resonate with? So here are my takeaways. Number one, do not skip process. Do not skip process. If you look at all these Bible characters that I told you about, they went through process. Esther went through process. Joseph was a shepherd boy and he went through so, so many challenges. David was a shepherd boy too. And he got to battle a couple of things when no one was looking. But that prepared him to be this king who had this track record of really winning battles with the help of God. So that is my question. What Bible character do you see yourself as? And remember, you cannot skip process, right? Number two, you may look around <laughs> and see that your life is not in line with a particular Bible character in the physical realm. But in the spiritual realm, God has already called you. You are a Joseph and some of you have had prophetic words over your life that you are a Joseph, you are a Esther, right? You are a Deborah. But you're looking around, you're like, what? <laughs> you have been called to do great things. You're called to be a financial, uh, a kingdom financier. You look at your account, you're like, really? Is this a joke? <laughs> but what I want to tell you is that you need to use the word of God. Anytime you see that the enemy creeping up, because he will, <laughs> any opportunity that he gets, he will come to you and whisper in your ear and say, man, this ain't, ha this ain't happening. <laughs> he will whisper to your ear and tell you all kinds of lies. But this is when you use the word of God to be able to combat it. I have scripture for every particular issue or negative thought that comes my way. Yes, I do because I understand the power of scripture. So if the enemy is telling me X, Y, Z about maybe if I'm feeling sick, X, Y, Z, hey, I bring this up and I declare the word of God. I declare it, I declare it. And I also tell God that you said in your word that you will watch over it to ensure that it performs. You are not a man that you should like. I speak it back to them. In addition to that, I ask for <laughs> the angels to act upon the words that I'm saying with precision and to expedite it as well. So you can use the word of God to be able to do these things. So that is my encouragement to you. Some of you are sitting right now. No one is seeing the call over your life. There are some things that God has whispered to you in the secret place. There are some prophecies that you only know. There are some dreams and visions that God has given you about your future. No one else sees it. Maybe a few smart people who, 
uh, can be able to see it and maybe they will tap into uh, your your destiny journey before you <laughs> okay <laughs> I don't I have to chop uh, a bit of what I've been saying because <laughs> I'm laughing so much so I hope I won't chop too much so <laughs> so so many people might really overlook you they will overlook you and at times here here is a kicker at times the enemy will really press on you because they think that i'm going to press on this girl so much because if i do she won't step into her destiny but if you lean into god man these enemies whatever they're doing they're just putting fuel into the fire right they're propelling you into your destiny. Now they are forcing you to step to step into your destiny. Unbeknownst to them. That's what they're doing essentially. That's why you see so many of these people when they become famous or they make it big, the number I mean, yes, they thank God and they thank people who have helped them, but they also thank the haters <laughs> and the enemies and the people who really put them into a position where they're like, okay, God. It's me and you. <laughs> so yes, that is it, folks. <sighs> I hope I have a lot of usable footage because I legit have laughed throughout this video. So we'll see. If you see some awkward snips of this particular video, just disregard it. I was probably laughing too much and I, <laughs> and I, I don't want to include that. So that is it, folks. I hope this Joseph story has really encouraged you. I'm looking forward to doing two more blog posts and videos in the future. So guys, I love you so much. <laughs> and guess what? I will see you on the next one.